I can basically use your company as my own personal ATM. And I don't mean ass to mouth. I was thinking that. One, two, three. I kind of want to jump into the end yeah. of the episode, which kicks things off with a bang, as they say. Andrew, <laughs> you have a big scene. Um, <laughs> with a, yeah, with a literal bang, Cameron, a literal bang. I was trying to think off the top of my head, have you had to film a death scene before? Um, no, and uh, I believe it was season one. I had like an, a, a mini heart attack. Um, but other than that, that was it. No, this was the first time, and it was my first like big boy stunt where they had to <laughs> use, we used what's called a squib, um, where they strap this like tiny uh, device to your chest that has like a blood pack in it, as well as an explosive. And I got lots of uh, conflicting um, advice about how to, uh, <laughs> about how to handle this. Casey has had to wear one in the past. Paul, I don't know if you have ever had I to. have, yeah, I have. Yes, it's they're, 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 it's, a, it's very nerve wracking. We also knew we only had one shot at that. So what you see in that episode is what you get. Like that's what happened. <laughs> that's I told how you it we went down. in a movie where Tom Selleck had to kill me and we all know he knows his way around a gun. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold yeah. on. And what? I, they were like, so I was <laughs> What movie is this? It's called Killers with Ashton Kutcher. Oh, and, yeah. Okay. Yep. Nice. Yep. Yeah. I'm supposed to get shot here. And they were like, right before, you know, they, they don't want you to look like you're going to anticipate it. But they're like, whatever you do, don't look down. And you're like, oh. So you have a whole scene <laughs> to wait. And they're like, if you look down, basically, it can explode in your face. And you're just like moving robotically. It's so it's hard. <laughs> yeah. The, the amount of energy around being shot or doing a stunt puts so much fear in you that mm -hmm. you truly are like you're never fully at ease and so now all i do is when i watch like cop shows on cbs like i want to see who's squinting when they're shooting their gun because it'll be a, like like a little split second because isn't like <laughs> laura dern doesn't she yes. like it's like a pew pew like she <laughs> she she mouths the the gunshots in star wars okay paul we learned about something about this and i'm sorry then we'll let you get to another question yeah. but andrew and i, I love this no the other day I was doing a sword fight with someone, I won't say who, because we don't know what happens. Hmm. And what did I keep doing? I was, I was going, Shoosh. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, you got to stop. And like, first it was like funny. And then I'm like, all right, we, we don't have one take of you not going. Kshoosh. And then people started coming forward from the crew and standing in solidarity. And they're like, we have seen so many actors go. Kshoosh. Because your brain doesn't compute. You've never done mm -hmm. these things, so you can only associate them with how you play did stuff. And they said it happens yeah. all the time. So I am just want to put that out there. I kind of think that's yes. in character for Tiff, though, maybe, to be yeah. doing this. Like, yeah. that kind of works out. <laughs> I think so. It was weird, but thank you. Andrew, you, I mean, you said you got some advice, some bad, some good, conflicting advice, I guess you should say. What, <laughs> what was the good advice, I guess? Well, we'll start there. <laughs> Um, the good advice was just to, to try your damnedest to not anticipate it mm -hmm. because I wasn't supposed to know that that was going to happen. So that was all I could really hang on to was, um, was just to try to not anticipate. And there's like someone shouting like three, two, one, and you're, like, <laughs> screaming, and you're like, don't anticipate it. Don't anticipate it. Well, you um, know, did they do yeah. it on the, did they do it on the count? Cause I know sometimes they try to like trick you and be like, they That's in the terrifying. back oh mm -hmm. yeah well the, that that scene in die hard where hans gruber falls from bruce willis's hand like at the very end they lied to him so when you see that shocked expression on alan rickman's face it's because they dropped him on two instead of one so it really <laughs> is like a frightened look i don't um, love that no yeah, it's a, that. yeah. i was they, watching very that. good I was just watching Copycat and Sigourney Weaver spits, and I forget the actor's name, but she spits in this guy's face, took him by surprise. The, you, the emotion is there. You feel, you know, yeah. you feel what that character is going through. So I feel like the surprise is helpful, if not <laughs> a little unfortunate for you as the actor. No, they were very good. We have a very nice, uh, very <laughs> responsible stunt team that was, was very helpful. So, so that was good. I think if I hadn't seen the trailer and had context clues, I might be sitting here thinking that, wow, we actually just killed Blair off. I mean, it seems pretty convincing in the moment, but I have seen the trailer, so I know there's more to come. How, what can you say about how that changes things for him moving forward? 
Well, this season, which is really fun, we kick off, um, I mean, in addition to our usual Black Monday, uh, very broad antics, um, we have a very, very serialized murder mystery that takes place throughout the entire season of, and uh, spoiler, um, there are more bodies. There's a higher <laughs> body count throughout the season. So where everyone is trying to figure out, everyone's a suspect, everyone's trying to figure out, you know, why is this happening to this group? Who might be behind this? Um, so it's really, it was a fun challenge this year to to not only get to do our our normal fun, silly stuff, but then also lean into this uh, almost clue-like uh, murder mystery this year. It's been very fun. I have to imagine Tiff is suspect number one. It's up there, probably. But <laughs> really, yeah. really love what you get to do so far this season, okay. Casey. I, <laughs> um, I really love what I get to do. <laughs> that's the sex scene <laughs> yeah <laughs> just the quick flip of positions you know staying in character the whole time it's that's pretty impressive that's like when when I reframe things in my life I don't want to do instead of being like I have to go so I'm like I get to do that I get that's, to <laughs> I'm gonna reframe that sex scene as what I get to do <laughs> I wanted to mention you've got a book out which I'm very excited about um a curveball but oh there it is <laughs> <laughs> oh this <laughs> A little it's cross genuinely promotion. here for another press thing, but it, you know, you never know when it wants to go. <laughs> well, I think that Tiff is someone that could probably has a hell of a book in her or three, especially yeah. after, especially after Blair gets shot, she probably has her whole story to tell there. Many ghost writers. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But what, what do you think she, you know, what, what kind of a book would she put out in the world? What do you, what do you think story she could, what story? I think, think Tiff has a lot of diet books in her that are very <laughs> ill-advised, horrible, like, anorexic diet culture in her and like sh fat shaming books unfortunately and like gosh just all the wrong <laughs> advice on dating and how to get a man and you know money Casey, I, I would go the other way and say that you're yeah. like a Louise Linton and you would be writing like full fiction novels like you would be like releasing oh. your own like you would have a like a really like maybe like a a romance, but like detective oh. novel series or something okay. like that. Danielle Steele situation. <laughs> yes. I like that. Yes. Hi, yeah, Danielle. <laughs> Perfect. But seriously, congrats on the book. I'm very excited. And uh, Andrew, I'm a big fan of your book. So that leads me, leads me, Paul, when, when, when do you put it? a good question for Paul. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, as soon as this interview gets over, I'll start crafting okay. something. I mean, <laughs> I, but very uh, big shoes to fill because I was such a fan of Andrew's book. It's so funny and great. And I'm in the middle of Casey's book right now, which is just it. I, Casey made me cry on the way dropping off my kid from preschool today, listening to her story about her son and her book today. I like these books both were, I read them so quick and they're so great. And uh, yeah, really fantastic. Oh, stuff. Well, I want Paul to write a book too. Yes. 100%. And you, Cameron, you know, everyone. I mean, yeah, get a book, my, get I'm a book out of you. <laughs> But I did want to talk about um, Keith specifically. I think there's a great runner of, of Keith. He's trying to assimilate into the, the Lehman Brothers culture to, to become an actual Lehman brother. And there's a great runner with, between you and Ken where you're trying to get on the same page, laugh the same way. What was it like working with Ken in those scenes? And I mean, did you get the sense that Ken is maybe an, um, a little bummed he doesn't get to act opposite himself anymore? Well, you know, look, I spent all last season working against Ken and Ken. Yeah. So uh, there's one less Ken. And uh, but still the most fun. I mean, look, Ken and I uh, kind of came up together in in a way, you know, whether it's like Children's Hospital or NTSF or Burning mm -hmm. Love. So I got to work with him a lot. And uh, and then this season was really fun to after watching him kind of create these two characters, doing scenes with these two characters, which feel uniquely different. Like that's the best part about doing these scenes with mm -hmm. Ken. They are very different uh styles uh so yeah so fitting into it is really great and then very quickly you know as season uh, as episode one kind of shows you i i venture out from the lehman brothers under the lehman brothers umbrella to kind of uh, dip my toe into fat fashions very excited about that i'm excited yeah. there's more fat fashions to come which brings us to the fact that fat this fashions. is we're now in the 90s um so you know we start to see a little bit of a different style, different look on everyone, which we all, I always love about the show, great fashions um, in general, but specifically fat fashions. But I was curious, there's a there's a reference to Columbia House, the CD club right off the bat, which <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I wondered if that was, were you guys in the club ever? I, yeah. I, 
yeah, I was in the club. I joined way too late. I should have known better. <laughs> I should have known better, but I it was like a couple years like, ago. Yeah, I ended up with a lot of CDs that, you know, ended up being coasters, but I couldn't send them back <laughs> too late. I sadly did all the clubs, the Laserdisc Club, the VHS Club, the CD Club, and the tape club. I was always about that <laughs> Columbia house. I got them all. I had a whole VHS collection when I was a kid. It was great. I could own these VHS tapes. The best. Wow, Paul. Paul, yeah. you have, Paul is always on the cutting edge of, of like new technology, new things, like truly. When I open yeah, up that paper. Set up. Look what he's dealing with here. He has the <laughs> lighting that he did. Like, I know the lighting it makes is sense beautiful. that you would have been on the forefront. The of Columbia that. house laser yeah. disc. Always. Yeah, those I'm popping in those laser discs now all the time. <laughs> and, and Casey, you were in the club as well. You said, did you get any any memorable CDs out of that? I don't remember, but I was like, <laughs> thought it was like Christmas. I was just like, this is so exciting. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me personally. And I was like a dork though that like when I even when I was young, I was into like '60s music. Mm. <laughs> so I remember like really trying to get a lot of like '60s music. <laughs> Embarrassing. I remember my friend had Classic. the best Columbia House scam because his uh, house next door to him was abandoned and he re <laughs> like registered his Columbia house to that house. Oh so he got his 12 oh. free and then never had to buy like the four extra ones, whatever you had to buy to, to get it out. That's pretty, that's smart. Yeah, it was a good scam. That's smart. very brilliant. Um, another addition to this season is uh, Thomas Barbuska. He comes in as, yeah. as Blair's assistant. And I think I first saw him in, in wet hot american summer and in, in first day of camp and he's like such a great bully in that so i was um prepared to i guess not not trust him no he was maybe up to no good in this but what can you tell me about working with thomas andrew well the first time i worked with thomas um he was nine years old it was on the new normal that i did for ryan murphy That's and thomas right. was a, a tiny little child who did a couple episodes. And when they showed me his audition for this, I was like, that kid looks so familiar. Mm -hmm. Only now he's 18 and he's like just a little ladies man running around mm -hmm. LA. Um, but so funny and yes, such a good bully. And it's fun to see, um, you know, Blair thinks he's gonna be in this position of power now as a Congressman, but just keeps getting kicked around and has an assistant who is so disrespectful to him <laughs> and, and and even though little Thomas is probably a foot smaller than I am, um, he is so mean to me. He's so mean to Blair. He's a real, it is he's a really good, funny with you too. He's it a good little bully, laugh. but a real sweetheart in real life as Casey can attest. We've spent a lot of time with him and um, <laughs> it couldn't, couldn't be lovelier. So he's definitely yeah. just a wonderful actor. Wait, you work here now? You take the question mark off that sentence. It's time to make some changes. Oh! What would you say? Oh. Okay. 